I'm Bianca Lamus and welcome to Tuning In. On today's show, we have Adele Langworthy from the Interfaith Center at Cal State Long Beach and Dr. Juan Benitez from the Center for Community Engagement, who are both running programs that are giving back to the community. The University Interfaith Center at Cal State Long Beach, located in Bronfman Hall 178, has been around almost as long as the university. Although the center is run by religious organizations, they insist their center is a place where all students can come together. The center offers counseling and informal conversations to various religious faiths on campus, although many may not be aware that the center also provides food for all students and a lounging area to rest or socialize with friends. Fine arts major Stephanie Sui tells us how she found the center. Um, I found it actually through a friend. Uh, he was really nice. He brought me here and we shared common faith, I guess, Catholicism. Uh, but yeah, I just came in here. I've seen this place a few times passing by and I really was like, what is this place? It looks fun and comfy and has sofas and feels like family home. But it turns out um, I didn't know about it until my friend told me it was an interface center. While a Presbyterian presence has been affiliated with the Interfaith Center from the start, the center is a collaborative effort with various organizations running the center as volunteer staff. Besides providing snacks for students, the center also runs a canned food drive, which allows people to take everything from peas to pasta sauce. Stephanie Sui shares how she and some students enjoy the service. Uh, you know, sometimes check the fridge and you know, there's food there. We can sign off and you know, with the pantry and just eat here and get a quick bite to eat and then head off. The food pantry feeds over a hundred students per week and is an ongoing service. Donations for the center are accepted at the CLA Dean's Office and CLA Department. Today in studio we have Adele Langworthy who will be sharing with us a little bit about her service that's giving back to students at Cal State Long Beach. Adele, thank you for being here today. Thank you, Bianca. So your service, uh, it's actually a canned food drive that has been going on for about three years here at Cal State Long Beach yes. for students. Mm -hmm. And uh, what kind of service is this canned food drive? It's a service that we provide to students long term because many students aren't able to get enough food to eat, to be able to think, to do their homework, and to be creative in the classroom. And what inspired this program? concern um, students coming into the University Interface Center and concern about their lives and their struggles in life and then in conversation with Mike, Mark Wiley who's also on staff here at the University. And you've been working at Cal State Long Beach for 18 years, is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were inspired by a person who came in one day and used to used to take the service, right? Yes, um, I used to give free food out in the student union when they would have movies and then I would have food each week after that and the students could come over after that and be able to enjoy and there was one student that would come in with her little um, backpack on wheels and like a little suitcase and she would take food and she would just shove it in her suitcase and she would put it in her pockets and come to find out that she was homeless and the food that she was taking on those Thursdays was the food that she was living off of for days. And because this program, it hasn't been official for uh, more than three years, right? but it has been going on for quite a while. We weren't doing canned food, we were doing real food, <laughs> cooked mm -hmm. food, uh, fresh food for students. I've been doing that through the ministry that I do at the Interface Center since I've been here. But the canned food drive started a couple years ago when we realized students needed food to be able to take home, to prepare, to eat, to be able to have for later in the day when the University F Interface Center wasn't open, that they could get in another part of the campus. And the canned food drive isn't just for people who maybe eat a certain type of food. It's available for vegetarians and other type of diets, right? Right. We can't always have vegan food, but we try to. And um, we have vegetarian food and we have regular food. We have kosher food. Mm -hmm. 
And I heard that you guys also have fruits sometimes? Yes, we have a lot of um, fresh fruit and vegetables and actually fresh meals also. One of the agencies where we get the food from is with Fresh and Easy. And so there, some of their meals are really fresh and sometimes students are eating you know, salmon and sushi and things like that as oh, well. Oh, that's so nice. And what is the process of actually going to like Fresh and Easy and getting the food from them? The food's actually donated to some local churches and the churches use it to support their ministries and then they share it also with the University Interfaith Center. And are these churches all from Long Beach or? Yes. What, which churches are they? Um, Covenant Presbyterian Church and Bayshore um, UCC Church. Those are the two biggest churches that bring things to the campus. And did you guys reach out to them uh, in order to, to make um, this program happen? Yes. Or? Mm -hmm. And uh, at your Interfaith Center, you also uh, have only two employees, but you have many students who come in and help out with the canned food drive as well. Correct. The Interface Center itself doesn't have any employees. Um, what the way the center's mix made up is there's different ministries that are members of it. And so the members are volunteer within the center itself, and they are the ones that help put that together. I coordinate it, and when deliveries are made, students help put the food away and sort it and things like that. And you have a sign-in system for the canned food drive, is that correct? Yes, um, students come in, they just say hi, and we talk a little bit about their day, and then there's a piece of paper, and we just ask them to write their first name down and some of the food that they take, so that we can do a tracking system. If somebody refused to write their name, we wouldn't worry about it, we don't check it, it's more of a counting system. But we also felt if, pe if students were able to write their names, they'd be held a little more accountable, and they wouldn't try to hoard or take more than their fair share. And is there a certain type of attitude that you guys get from new students or uh, students that are returning? What's the difference between their reaction to the program? Um, new students come in a little leery, um, just kind of coming in to check and see what it's really all about. Is this really free? Are there any strings <laughs> attached? Um, the students that have been coming for a long time, the office is just a really safe, relaxing place. You can sit and eat your food there, or you can take it with you. And so it's just a place kind of like home for them. And does this program help uh, the Interfaith Center bring more students into uh, your facility or? I would say it brings more students into the facility, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would think some people might think there are uh, religious incentives to come in and maybe if you go in and you receive some food, you might have to be involved. What kind of uh, experience have you had with that? I think that's some of the leeriness when they come in. They don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that isn't a problem. We just kind of check in, say, hi, how's your day going? How's mm -hmm. class? You know, those kind of things. And then if a student wants to have a religious conversation, a spiritual conversation, we're able to do that with them. But the student has to initiate. We do not initiate with that. And what kind of, um, how, reward, how rewarding has this been for you? working with the Canned Food Drive and in the Interfaith Center at Cal State Long Beach? Uh, I find it really rewarding because the students are very thankful and they're very grateful for it. They don't take it for granted. Mm -hmm. And some students will come in, one student in particular came in and said, you know, I never would have passed the test had I not been able to eat to be able to think so I could study. And before I knew about this, I would like be worrying about how I was going to get lunch and how I was going to get dinner and how I was going to be able to make it through the night to study and that makes it rewarding. And what kind of attention has your center gotten because of the canned food drive? Um, we're getting more. <laughs> By being here today, um, we got an article in the newspaper um, not too long ago. We had an article last year in it. Uh, we're getting a little more visibility from that. And how, uh, how has the program increased in popularity after articles on in the Daily 49er? I would say we're getting probably four to five more students a day new that are coming in and also the professors have been great because they've been talking about it I just had some, several students come in last week and said oh my professor was telling me about this so that was really good I think the news is getting out to the professors as well mm -hmm. and how has uh, the program had reaction from higher up people in Cal State Long Beach um, we haven't um, really kind of gone <laughs> real far with mm -hmm. all of that 
but through Student Life and Development, they've been very supportive of it. And um, Liberal Arts, um, where Mark Wiley is, we've had a lot of support from them. They're actually the ones that are doing food drives on campus to be able to bring the canned foods over. And Nicole is the student assistant working with that right now. And when we talked last week, she had 216 canned foods to bring, and they're bringing it on a weekly basis. So that's really, really good. And with the food, um, where do you guys actually store it? Is it somewhere inside the Interfaith Center or? Yeah, I have some bookshelves behind. Um, my desk is kind of towards the corner, and then I have bookshelves in that corner. Mm -hmm. And I arrange it all so it kind of looks like a store, and the students help do that. So it's all on shelves and all broken up in packages. So if someone brought us a big package of green beans, a big case of the cans, we break it all up so the cans, so students can come in and just grab a can and be able to go and don't have to worry about ripping open the packaging because students are tight on their schedule sometimes. It's hard for them to get all the way over to Brotman Hall to get it, and then they've got to run back to class. So we try to have everything very accessible. And is there a certain type of inspection of the food that you guys bring in? Um, I just kind of go over it to make sure that it's fresh and it's good and it's safe. And who are, what company contributes the most? You mentioned Fresh, fresh and Easy. Fresh and Easy um, brings a little bit um, in. I don't think there's any one company. It's, it's a lot of little drives that make it happen. And what would be the ultimate goal with uh, the canned food drive at the Interfaith Center? That it would become um, a bigger and more of a part of the institution to really be able to help the students on a long-term basis. And with the canned food drive, do you guys uh, do this as well out of, outside in the community? Not with the Interface Center, no. And are you involved in other programs out in the community? Um, yes, I am. I'm a pastor at a church in downtown Long Beach, and so we work with Christian Outreach in Action, which is a block away, and they do food drives and feed the poor of the community. And so if there's students, I'll also refer them there. You know, if they're looking for meals or looking for bigger things or have bigger things that we can manage, I would refer them there and they're able to get assistance there. Well, Adele, I think it's a great program that you guys are providing for students here at Cal State Long Beach. And it's been an honor to interview you here today. Well, thank you. Thank you. Never look a howler monkey in the eye. We built the entire library out of recycled bottles. Fried ants are delicious. We finished a clinic in our in a rainstorm. Really? That was a confidence builder. My students actually ended up teaching me. So I learned this dance. I'll show you this dance. In la keg, a la quine. The classroom was, was more of a class tent. I think managing a sales team is tough. <laughs> Try working with five different villages. My alarm clock was a rooster. Beans for breakfast, beans for lunch, beans for dinner. We ate a lot of beans. I learned a third language. My seatmate on the bus was a goat. Always include the village elders. Always. My morning commute was by canoe. After two months, I was ready to quit, but after two years, I didn't want to leave. I didn't know I had it in me. Turn two years of service into a lifetime of experience. To all the Peace Corps volunteers, past, present, and future, thank you for your service to your country and the world. I used to have a goat. Where did it go? It went to a family who really needed it. You see, giving a family an animal is like giving them a business. The wool, milk, eggs all turn into income for medicine, school, clothing, a better home, a sustainable livelihood. Soon the family is passing on the gift of the animal's offspring to another family who does the same and on and on until the whole community is lifted out of poverty. That is where my goat went, and that's why you give to Heifer International. My name is Monica Delgado and I'm the Community Engagement Support Coordinator. So the CCE stands for Center for Community Engagement and we're a center here on campus that works to bring the campus together with the community basically. Uh, the idea is that we share our, our resources and our expertise, our knowledge, um, and also receive uh, the same from the community because there is also a lot of 
knowledge and expertise. So my role here at the Center for Community Engagement is to work with faculty and on campus who are, who are utilizing um, service learning approach in their curriculum and I help them partner with community organizations um, depending on their discipline and on the relevance of of the community project and I also help students get placed at those different sites I help them to track their service hours uh, we're using a database that we have called the SL Pro and I also help um, the community organizations establish uh, affiliation agreements through our risk management office to make sure students who are out in the field are covered. Our executive director here at the center is Juan Benitez. Our associate director is Karina Sass and our administrative coordinator is Carmen Areola. We also have an, a project specialist, um, Kendra Jenis, who works with an, our AmeriCorps program and also uh, Christian Ponce who also works on our some special initiative projects. Right. Yeah, we have um, student assistants who work both in the office and off campus at some of our partner sites. I feel like the work that I could have, that I'm getting done to help the community um, and to help people get more involved with community work is like tenfold. So I, I think it's a good place to be and I'm happy and, and I love working with our faculty, with our students, and with our community organizations. Our next guest has been distinguishing himself in various community projects in Los Angeles for various years. I'd like to welcome to our studio Dr. Juan Benitez, the Executive Director at the Center for Community Engagement. Dr. Benitez, thank you for being here today. Thank you for inviting me. It's great to be here. I'd like to start off by saying it's an honor to have you here representing CCE because Today's episode focuses on giving back, and the Center for Community Engagement is CSULB's university-wide center that helps not just the campus, but the community in creating a better society. Right, so we do have a university mission that focuses around the public good, and our center helps, to, uh, helps the university to advance uh, that mission, although we're not the only center on campus that interacts with the community, uh, we do facilitate campus-wide collaborations. And there isn't just one program that engages students, faculty, and the community. There are various. Uh, what exactly are those programs? Sure, we have three broad strategies or areas that we focus on, and within each of those areas, we have different initiatives and projects. The areas are first, service learning, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, the second is what we call community-based participatory and action research. And the third are our broader community engagement efforts where we seek to uh, strengthen our, our connections with uh, communities. And these are the initiatives? Correct. And in these initiatives, you guys uh, create community programs where mm -hmm. you teach people about health issues and also community issues. It seems like a big project. How does your, how does your center make this happen? Well, we have currently three long-term place-based initiatives. Uh, in uh, West and Central Long Beach is one. It's around uh, the social determinants of a healthy community. Uh, we have another uh, long-term place-based project in eight Southeast LA cities. Uh, that focuses on civic engagement in these cities uh, and issues around local governance and government. And we have another long-term uh, initiative in the city of El Monte, which also focuses on health and education. And besides these initiatives that are actually facilitated by CCE employees. Um, there are also SL program, right? Mm -hmm. There's it, also an SL program. That's correct. It's our, what we call our service learning. So service learning is a pedagogical uh, framework that we use to incorporate learning in communities uh, around community identified issues. Currently we have between 80 to 100 courses or sections of courses that are connected with community partners around a community identified need. At any given time during the academic year, we have about 2,000 students involved in service learning experiences. And uh, it's a wide range of issues that they're addressing across a wide range of uh, courses and departments. And when you started the SL program, how many students were involved initially? Well, it's hard to tell because it's really hard to capture that data. Uh, some courses require it, other courses offer it as an option. 
Uh, so we've become better at um, identifying what those courses are and what community partners uh, we're working with. Uh, so for instance, we have a database that's full of hundreds of community partners that uh, would like the opportunity to partner with us. Unfortunately, not all courses have a service learning component. So right now we're working with about 100 community partners, like I said, in about 80 to 100 courses. And how would a, how would a classroom embed the SL program into their curriculum? Right, so that's a great question. We have a best practices approach where the uh, credit for the course is not actually on the service, it's on the learning that takes place. So the, the, the service is connected to the course goals and objectives. So it's not like a volunteer experience, it's not like an internship. Uh, it actually um, starts with the premise that learning occurs both in the classroom setting, but in the community, and it's based on what the community partner needs. Uh, so there's a reciprocal. Uh, relationship. Students should be out in the field throughout the course of the semester. We look for a minimum of 25 uh, hours, but it does vary from course to course. And what kind of feedback do students provide the center after they've been in an SL class? Overwhelmingly, we have positive uh, feedback, not just from the students, but from the faculty members involved and also the community partners. Uh, we are an asset in the community. When we talk about highly valued degrees, uh, you know, we have to think about what does it mean to have a highly valued degree, so it's not just about what we're learning here on campus, but how we're able to apply those skills and, and knowledges, and also take into account that the community is also a space of enlightenment. And what does it mean to have an SL program on this campus? I think it's essential to the core of fulfilling our university mission. Uh, and again, if we're looking to graduate students with highly valued degrees, uh, this is part of what it means to get a highly valued degree. Uh, how you apply skills uh, in the field, but also how you take into account what the community assets are and how those can be a part of your learning experience here on campus. And what have um, you guys heard from students coming back to the center and saying that the ESSEL program did for their career or for their experience here at Cal State Long Beach? Well, we'd like to think of those experiences as life-changing experiences. Uh, many of the students come back and tell us, hey, I want to take an additional service learning course. Are there other ways for me to be involved? Uh, as well with our faculty, uh, you know, it does take a lot of work initially to get a service learning full-fledged program going through a service learning course. So we hear the same thing from faculty, even though uh, expectations may be high on the front end, uh, once those experiences are fulfilled, uh, it's a lifelong process around being change agents and being involved uh, in wanting to participate in community building initiatives. And professors, how do they, what is the feedback they provide for your center as well? So it's mixed, uh, I have to be honest, because it does require a lot of work. You have to identify community partners, uh, you have to develop tools, uh, assignments, assessments in the course, and because the credit, again, is not just on the service, so you're not getting credit points uh, okay. for how many hours you're doing, but what learnings uh, are part of that uh, service and how those connect back to the class. It would be the same as assigning a project. Uh, as assigning uh, additional books uh, to read. So we like to focus that this is not something in addition to uh, in something in the course, but it's an integral part uh, of the course. And which type of classes are mostly involved with the SL program? It's a wide range. Uh, everything from biology, we have a conservation biologist, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Kristen Whitgraft, who's been working with us for years, uh, to gerontology, Dr. Maria Claver and Foundling Consumer Sciences is working with dozens of community partners to political science. Um, uh, we have professors there doing several uh, different kinds of civic engagement projects, engineering as well. So it is a wide range of, of opportunities that we have for students to be involved through service learning. And what kind of work is required of CCE employees in order to make this program successful? Yeah, that's a challenge because it does uh, uh, involve a lot of relationship building mm -hmm. even before the semester starts. With the faculty and the students? With the faculty, students, and then importantly, the community partner. So we mm -hmm. see uh, those three kind of stakeholder groups as informing how this uh, plays out. You know, ultimately, it is a university course uh, with all the rigors attached to a university course, but we, we like to think of it as the course, the community work is part of the course uh, content, uh, if you will, and so it does require a lot of coordination on the community partner side. We work on a semester basis, academic year calendar. Mm -hmm. The rest of the world doesn't operate according to winter breaks or semesters or uh, holidays the way that we uh, do here on campus. So it does require a lot of facilitation and coordination, uh, but most important, a commitment to 
uh, these mutual efforts. And with the ESSEL program, what would you say is the ideal mission? I think the ESSEL program by itself is part of a broader uh, initiative or, or mission. Uh, I think the, the focus around a broader community engagement uh, effort for the university to have stronger ties to community to address community uh, issues. Uh, SL Pro is one of the tools, one of the ways in which we achieve that. It's not the only students. We still encourage students to volunteer, uh, to get internships, uh, to do other kinds of community work. SL Pro offers a concrete example of how we can do that institutionally and systematically through the university. And Dr. Benitez, I would like to thank you for coming here today and sharing the amazing things that your center is doing. Thank you for inviting me and I encourage students and faculty and staff that want to be more involved around community identified needs uh, to come uh, find out more about what we do and explore ways to get involved. Thank All you. Right, thank you.